Hello everyone and welcome to this Gemini web course. In this course, we're gonna learn about the Gemini API, which is Google's AI model. And we're gonna use it in a small demo website to create a predictive support functionality. There are three videos in this course and you're gonna learn many things related to the Gemini web API. We're gonna start by creating an API key. We're gonna talk about restrictions. We're gonna install the library and we're gonna use AI Studio to craft a prompt and then we're gonna test it, etc. And at the end, we're gonna build the predictive support functionality. So this is the demo website. It's a template that I found online and we have the landing page. We have the orders page and you can add an order. If you do, then this number will increase. The most notable difference is going from zero to any positive number. And you have the profile page. Pretty basic website, but the idea is that when we click on this help, it's gonna predictively show us one of the FAQs that we have provided. So on the profile page, it says, how can I change my email address? On the landing page, it says, how can I help you today? And that's like the generic fallback message that we provided. And what's most interesting is that on the orders page, if we have no orders, it's gonna suggest to help me with placing an order. However, if I already have an order, one or more, then it's gonna show me how to ask for a refund. And that's pretty cool because we didn't particularly hard code that, we just gave like the FAQ. You'll see that when you write the prompt, but we just said like, if the user already has orders, then show them how to ask for a refund, otherwise don't. And the way this works is that uh, we are always getting the H1 of the page. And this also really shows how important it is to write semantic HTML because you can use it also yourself. So in the landing page, it gets the H1, Profile page, it gets the profile, H1, and here it gets this H1. To be able to follow along, here are the prerequisites that you need for this course. Basic command line experience with Git and NPM, beginner to intermediate JavaScript experience. You also wanna be familiar with promises and then async await. Optionally, it's also nice if you're familiar with the four of iterations, we're gonna use them in one optional part. If you wanna brush up your JavaScript skills, then check out learnjavascript.online. It's my interactive online course and on the screen now you see the knowledge map where you can see all the topics you will learn in the course and then you can follow along and you can click on a topic, it takes you to the lesson once you've completed it. And it also comes with the flashcards app so you can use the space repetition algorithm to recap the concepts you've just learned. You know the technology changes very quickly and that's especially the case with AI. So there's a big chance that some of the content, some of the code snippets that I have in this course may not work by the time you're watching it. I will strive to keep this course up to date. And for that, I have also hosted it on learnjavascript.online slash AI slash Gemini. This link is also available in the description. There you'll be able to watch this same video so you can continue this video, but you'll also be able to find the code snippets which you can copy paste. And I will also note down updates. So I'll make sure that the code snippets continue working in the future and also update them to future models. Moreover, there you can download the uh, starter template that we're gonna use for this project when we start implementing the predictive support functionality. At the moment of recording, the Gemini API unfortunately does not work in the EU. This is most likely gonna change in the future, so check out the website for updates. I'll post an update when it becomes available in the EU. And since I live in Amsterdam, I'm gonna have to go somewhere else where this is gonna work. So, come on Gijsje, we have a flight to take. So let's get you dressed for the airport. Yes. <laughs> and the pose, the poaches. Yes. Are you ready for the flight? Oh, look at this cur curious tail. <laughs> yes, we just landed in San Francisco. Cool. You can take this off now. This is the Google AI Studio. It's a very nice space to create, test, and iterate over your prompt. So we can click here, create, new, and I'm gonna say freeform, freeform prompt. And then I'm gonna write my prompt. For example, write a three line poem about JavaScript. And then I press run. And later on, we're gonna see how we can make this, for example, an input variable. Now let's go ahead and create an API key. So we're gonna click on get an API key and then we're gonna create a new API key. And now it's generating an API key. I'm gonna copy it and then I'm gonna go click on it here because we wanna apply some restrictions. So again, I click on this new API key to create restrictions. 
The thing is, it's important to restrict this API key because if anyone by accident gets this API key, they will be able to use it on your behalf and then you may incur some cost. There are many ways you can apply restrictions. You can specify restrictions for an IP address or like for a specific Android or iOS app or for a specific website. And for example, when I hosted the demo, I was sharing it with some people who needed to review the course. I set star and then dot netlify.app. It was just temporary, like at least make sure it's from Netlify. Uh, you probably want to be more specific to your, to your own domain or your own subdomain. And you want to also add localhost uh, if you want it to work on localhost. So I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to have it on localhost. So I'm going to add localhost and then restrict the API key, save. So it's also like important to have a different API key for production because the production one should not work on localhost. And then you can have another one for staging or development and uh, they would have different restrictions. Well, this video will use the API key on the front end. This is actually not recommended because people can find your API key. You really want to use this from your back end and you want to have it in a .n file that is not committed to your GitHub repository. So nobody should be able to see your API key. You should never commit it to Git and it should be stored safely. You want to do all of your API calls on the back end using Node. But for now, we're just going to do it on the front end because it's a small demo project. Cool. Now, if you downloaded the project, just go ahead and run npm install and npm run dev and then we can open localhost port 5173. Once we open it, we have this project and we're going to go ahead and paste our API key in the env.js. And this is our project. We have the env.js where we store the API key. We have the index, orders and profile.js. And then we have the main.js where we're going to write the main code. And finally, the prompt.js where we're going to write the prompt. All right. In this first video, you learned how to create an API key, how to set up restrictions for this API key, and we cloned the starter project. In the following video, we're going to install the Gemini API and we're going to make a basic request and then check out streaming, which is going to be faster for longer responses. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.